So here we have a Miss Pac-Man. Labeled, does not work. BB. It's not me. Someone else's initials. So, um, it originally had this card on it, but I can't get into here. I got to test things with that. So I just put this FPG replacement that I got from Arcade Shop. Well, let's go ahead and do our testing. What do we do first? I'm sure you all know now. Let me hear it. That's right. That's the power. So, let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Just this white screen. Okay, so power. Okay, I got decent power. Put that meter away. And let's, let's test the reset circuit. So, the reset circuit is what is it? It's a six pin from the back of the Z80. One, two. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can do this instead. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is not resetting. And let's test the CPU clock. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there is no CPU clock. So it has no clock and it's not resetting. Um, we gotta figure out what's wrong with the clock first because without the clock, it's a very good chance that the CPU, it won't reset at all. So let's look at those schematics. Okay, so here are the schematics for the sink and the clock circuit on the Z80. You can see on pin 6 from the Z80 this is the clock signal and it goes back and we can't see this. This is an inverter. I cannot see, I can't read what the chip number is but the output is pin 5, the input is pin 4 and uh, the input is 1H and 1H comes down here is generated, where is 1H generated from? Right here from pin 5 at 8C 74LS74. CPU clock comes from it's pin 6 on the chip and I can't read what this schematic says it feeds it. It's too blurry. But I can see that the 6 megahertz signal comes from 8B pin 13. So let's go to 8B pin 13. 8B 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And we got 6 megahertz. So that's not the issue. And it's something here. What is that? I cannot read that chip that at all. Let's see if I can get another better schematic. I cannot. So I'm gonna have to trace this manually. Pin six. And this this board has been hacked, looks like, for Ms. Pac-Man without the daughter board. So pin 6, where does that go? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.
coming from here. Coming from pin 5 on 8A. Pin 5 on 8A. So 8A is this ship here that I can't read the schematics for. It's too blurry. So, one, two, three, four, five. We got nothing. Its input is four, which was high. And it's inverter, so that makes sense. The input from that is one H, so we got to find one H. Well, let's go down to our sync circuit, why don't we? Turn that so you can see that a little better, hopefully. figure out where 1H comes from. So we're going to have to check out the sync circuit. And 1H is derived from 8C in 5. So let's see 8C. Ah, it's a Signetics chip. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's nothing there. Um, the opposite should be 6. And it is the opposite. See that it's getting, this chip gets the input on pin 3, 1, 2, 3. It's getting the input. And doesn't look, oh, there's pin 4 should be high. 1, 2, 3, 4. Pin 4 is high. And pin 1 should be high. And it is. And so there's really nothing that should affect this. Unless something's pulling 1H low or high or whatever it is. I'm just going to replace it. You test it, but it's like a Signetics chip. And um, Signetics is always bad. You always have bad chips. So. And these, uh, this is a 74LS74, which often do go bad. So, I usually don't show you when I remove stuff, but I will today. Using a Hacko 808, which is an amazing thing, let you just, you can actually just suck the chip, the, the solder right off and remove the chips. Um, if you're going to do any board work, I recommend you get one of these. It's basically impossible to do board work without a good solder sucker. So I'll clean out the nozzle real quick. And I'll just give you tips real quick on the cell soldering. Tip number one: make sure your your solder gun is nice and clean. Hear that? A lot of airflow. And then tip two: just put this on here for like one, two, three, four, five, six. Just do a little circle around and lift right up with the with the gun still on. So you suck all the solder out. About seven seconds. I wouldn't go too much more. You can do a little less. You can do a little more. You want a nice. You want to make sure it's nice and clean. You can see. And then you can suck that chip right out, and we can you reuse it. If it ends up not being bad, we can reuse it. quick switch inputs here. And I'm going to switch to my VMware so I can show you a new tool another tool that I use. Okay. So when I remove this chip, remove it nice and clean. One thing I often do is I'll just 
take some players and very quickly, very lightly just squeeze on each chip pin. That makes it often easy to come off. You don't want to rip, the, it's very easy to rip these these traces off, especially if you didn't get all the solder out. But now I'm just going to go to my um, my tool here. This is a, I don't know, I got it in China. I, well, I wasn't in China. I got it from China. It's like a TL, I don't even know what it is. TL866A. Is that right? Yeah. Really useful thing, though. I think you can use Windows 10 with it or whatever, but I have it on Windows, in a VM on Windows XP. And you can just go here and choose select IC, logic IC, and then put the chip in, 74LS74, and choose the chip, pop it in here, and choose test. It'll tell you if it's good or bad. Oh, it looks normal. That's interesting. So maybe it wasn't that ship, which is odd because I don't know what else it would be. Oh, unless it's this 161 that's pulling it. All right. Well, let me go ahead and socket it. Put a socket in there, and then we'll see what happens. So I put a socket in there, and um, let's see, theoretically, this output uh, on pin 5, should be floating. If it's stuck, that means something's pulling it either high or low. One, two, three, four, five. And it is, it's floating where it should be. So, put another one in just for fun. Look at that. Game's working. So, my chip tester lied. Is the first time it ever said something was good when it wasn't good, which is odd. Um, says Super Miss Pac-Man. I don't even know what Super Miss Pac-Man is. Sounds like sound is good. Look at that. So, uh, bad ship. Sorry that my, my tester lied to me there, but at least you saw my process. And keep in mind that your tools will sometimes lie to you. You know, you gotta be aware of that. If you see something that doesn't make sense, your tool tells one thing, but your your logic says another. Well, it might be that uh, your tool is wrong. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Also, consider being a Patreon supporter at patreon.com/arcades.